Was that truth telling? Very, very strong words in truth telling. The problem is with truth tellers today, they're not very welcome. Jesus says, You stole the prophets. We talk about we want prophets, we want the prophetic voice to come into our church and a prophetic challenge, but we stone the prophets. We thank God for the prophetic word that we heard here today, the challenging word we heard here today. God help us if we can't be truth tellers. In this month of prayer and reflection, I just want to share a few thoughts with you. To go away, it's very challenging what I'm going to share. So I, I warn you in advance. It's a challenge to holiness. And it's a challenge that I've been reflecting on the last few weeks. And it started with Jean's testimony. And Jean's testimony was a testimony, an honest testimony about how her and her sister, her relationship totally broke down. We just put it up on YouTube. I think there's over 100 hits on Jean's testimony so far. But what touched me more than anything was when she said, when she was looking up at the altar, she felt the piercing eyes of Jesus looking at her with love and compassion. And it just touched her heart so much. I couldn't get that out of my spirit this last couple of weeks. And I challenge everybody here, including me, that this next few weeks as we reflect and coming up to Christmas, Christmas can be a very challenging time, very fun-filled time. It can strain a lot of relationships as well, and a lot of parties, and a lot of people get drunk, and a lot of things get said, and families squabble. And this is a time for us, I really believe, to go that bit deeper, to pray this last few weeks. But I would just like to say this to you. Pray, pray, and I'm going to pray for this, this next few weeks, to develop seeing through the eyes of Jesus. How does Jesus see us? Like Jean was sharing that with us. How does Jesus see us? How did Jesus see that broken relationship with her and her sister? They wouldn't even talk to each other. And how God brought incredible reconciliation between them. I'm going to develop that for the next four weeks as we take this time out to try and see others the way Jesus sees them. Some time ago, you remember Paul Moore? You know, Paul comes up here every month. He he travels about two or three hours. We did a big interview with him. And Paul was a rascal. In his past life, he was a rascal. And Paul gave an incredible testimony about where he came from. He was here only a few weeks ago to share with us on Suicide Sunday. Remember, he told us how he tried to take his life three times. But the people in Paul's past would want to keep him in his past. And before I interviewed him, I said that some people will freeze you in time and click that photograph And the Jerry Bradley of the past is frozen in time with the Terry Quinn and Scotland. The people who knew me then in Scotland have frozen me in my past. And Paul Moore came there and gave an incredible testimony. And remember I was saying the people who knew you then need to meet the people who knew you now. That our lives are being transformed and how Jesus sees us, how Jesus sees every person through the eyes of love, through the eyes of compassion. And we do give ourselves a hard time. And I was reminded of a prayer group years ago when I was in Charismatic and you this young girl got up and it stuck with me. I've shared this dream so many times because I really believe it's a prophetic dream and maybe we could all learn from it. 
She said that she was sleeping in a deep sleep and she saw this whole court scene and she was in the stand of the one being accused. She was the accused. And she looked over and she saw the jury and she couldn't make out their faces but all the jury was sitting there. And then walked Jesus as the judge and Jesus sat as the judge and she says, I just remember, just like Jesus was saying, his piercing blue eyes was staring at me with so much love. I just knew how much he loved me. And I was so convicted how much a sinner I was. And the next thing, the other door opened and then walked Satan. The Bible says he's the accuser of the brethren. Three things Satan does temptation, accusation, and deception. Tad. He's a tad. Temptation, accusation, and deception. And he walked to the front of the court and she was standing behind the stand. And he started to tell her, accuse her of all her sins. This woman is a troublemaker. And she said, everything he said, I agreed with. I stood up and I said, I am. This woman's prideful, this woman's arrogant, this woman, whatever he was saying, this woman's selfish. And she kept agreeing and agreeing. She says, you're right, I am prideful. I am a sinner. I'm a terrible sinner. I've hurt people and I've upset so many people. And she was totally under conviction. She agreed with everything he said. And then Jesus turned to the jury and he says, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, what do you say? And one woman gets stood up and then but all of a sudden, the people behind the jury, their eyes, their faces became very clear that we were brothers and sisters in Christ. They are members of the prayer group. And one woman got up and says, well, that may be true, but I remember when I was lonely, she came to visit me. I had nobody. And she came and knocked on my door and spent the day with me. And then another member of the jury says, I remember I had a terrible separation. I went through a divorce. And she came to visit me. I was broken. I was rejected. I just needed somebody to hold my hand. And she was there for me. Then a young boy got up and said, I remember I was begging outside a shop. And she came up and she gave me money. She paid for me to get into rehab that night. And my life has now changed. And I'm no longer addicted because of what she did for me. And one after another, all the people were telling them how much a blessing she had been to them. And I really believe that if we develop that lifestyle of seeing through the eyes of Jesus, the Bible said we have been given a ministry, a ministry of reconciliation. To be able to see the good in people, to be able to see the love in people, to be able to see what only God can see in the heart. The Bible talks about King David, who was a man after God's own heart. And King David was a rascal. He committed all the sin, he committed adultery with Bathsheba and killed Uriah the Hittite. But God calls him a man after his own heart. And if we could start to see each other the way Jesus sees us, not through our faults, not through how we, we let each other down, and that may be speaking to you about family members, or maybe a friend or colleague at work that, that just drives you crazy. Try seeing them through the eyes of Jesus. I remember when my brother died 
I, 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 I cut over this guy. I was driving through. I didn't know where I was. I was so upset. And this guy was shouting and screaming at me. And I don't know what was that. Raising his fist. He was going to kill me. And I remember stopping the car. And I got out of the car and I walked towards him. He thought I was going to fight him. <laughs> and I said, I'm so sorry. I've just lost my brother. I'm just, I'm just you know, thinking clearly. And he instantly changed. He said, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have behaved the way I behaved. And he didn't know what I was going through. And nobody knows what any of us are going through. And this next three to four weeks, try and, I'm going to try and develop that habit. And I was reminded of a pastor friend of mine many years ago, he had a situation. He had to go and bring correction to one of his leaders who had fell into sin, serious sin, involved with women, money. And he went to three of his elders and he says, I want to take somebody with me. He was broken hearted, but he knew he had to go and bring that correction. And he says to the first elder, what would you say if you come with me? I would tell him he's an absolute disgrace. I would tell him he's let us all down. I would tell him clearly he should be ashamed of himself for what he's done. And he went to the second man, he says, what about you? He said, I would defrock him. I would ask for his resignation. And I'd make sure he never ever steps foot back in this church ever again. And he went to the third man. What would you say? And he says, Pastor, I don't think I could say anything. He says, what? Why could you not say anything? He says, because I'm just a sinner. And I'm weak. And maybe if I was put in that position, I might have committed the same, that same sin. I don't know his journey, but I just know I, by, by the grace of God, it never happened to me. And the humility that man had, the pastor says, you come and visit me with, to, to, to talk to this man. And I think if we all in this time remember the good times, Remember how people have been such a blessing in their lives and rejoice in that. That could be your wife, it could be your husband, it could be a child who's stretching you and challenging you. Try and see through the eyes of Jesus. And I'll tell you, when we start developing that and we see through the eyes of Jesus, it's a whole different ballgame. The people who knew you then doesn't matter because Jesus knows you now. Can you imagine what the people must have been like who knew Mary Magdalene? She had seven devils under the Bible says. Can you imagine what they would have said about Mary Magdalene? She's one of his followers. Do you know what she did? Do you know the trouble she caused? Can you imagine Matthew? Matthew was a tax collector, the most hated people in Israel at the time because they were robbing even their own people. And Jesus says, follow me, Matthew. Can you imagine the crowd, what they were saying about Matthew? But Jesus chose him. And Jesus chose Peter. Can you imagine the crowd? He knew Simon, the fisherman. He's all over the place. He's reacting. He's competitive. He's always competing with young John. And Jesus says, you're Kephas. You're going to be my rock. Simon, Simon, Satan's asked to sift you like wheat. But I'm going to pray for you. That when you're converted, you strengthen your brothers. That we can see the good in each other. And see the good in others. The people who challenge us. The people who, who really take us to the nth degree. Just like that girl. Remember the good times. And remember the good in, in people. I was walking through the streets last night and I was heartbroken in Dundalk watching all these young girls half naked partying lipsticks and all looking good and I'm thinking God would you please protect them tonight. They didn't even know 
what they're getting up to. But it'd be very easy to be judgmental. And it'd be very easy to be judgmental of the young boys. They know what they're up to. But the young boys are just in their journey. They don't know any better. Seen through the eyes of Jesus is a whole different <clears throat> How do you think Jesus sees you and me and all our sin? He sees us with his eyes that Jesus, uh, Jean spoke about. Eyes of love and compassion. Don't be accuser of the brethren. Don't. We need to be excusers of the brethren because Jesus is the, is the one who excused us. Can you imagine what the crowd must have been like at the cross when Jesus turned to that thief? Maybe the very people that he stole from was at the bottom of that cross. Robbed them. And Jesus looks at them. Today, you'll be with me in paradise through the eyes of Jesus. Jesus saw Peter and his completion, how he was going to be the first pope. He was all over the place. He was denying them. But Jesus chose him. So maybe if some people watching here and maybe listening to this on YouTube, maybe somebody's challenged you. And maybe they've hurt you so much. Maybe they've caused you pain. Try to see them through the eyes of Jesus and see the love of God in them and try and have compassion for them and see the good in them and the good times they've had with them. So many people in courts today who once loved each other, <coughs> killing each other and destroying each other. But if they had looked to each other through the eyes of Jesus, it would be nothing but love and compassion. And that's a high calling. That's a high level of discipleship. That's a very high level of discipleship. And God will challenge us. And God will bring people into our lives this Christmas. And he'll challenge us. How do you see them? Are you going to love them the way I love them? But she did this. She did that. He said this. He said that. You don't know what they did to me. Everybody could say that. About one thing or another. You have no idea how they hurt me. You have no idea how they crushed me. What does Jesus think? And I'm just going to finish by telling you a personal story. Most of you know my testimony about the woman. This woman came to me in the middle of the night at half two in the morning, still in her pyjamas, said that God had told me to tell, to tell me to let go when my son was dying, because I, I just couldn't let go. But she had a prophetic voice, and she came to me and she says, God's told me to tell you to let go. Do you know in the community, that girl was known as a gossip, troublemaker. My brother used to say she can talk for Scotland. He talk, 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 talk. But God used her. God used this little troublemaker. God used this wee gossip to bring a prophetic voice to me. Maybe God had asked others and they refused. But God used her to come and knock on the door. The most of the people in the community didn't like her. They had a word to, if he'd mentioned her name, don't talk to me about her. But she had such a good heart. And my baby died in her arms. Not my arms, her arms. This little busybody was used by God. And God sees all of us and the potential of all of us and the love that we can show each other and it's a high call. And that stuck with me all my life and people would still say to this day about that person, do you know the, ba the day that my baby's funeral, nobody came back to her house. We're so used to 
people coming and teas and coffees and the day of the funeral, I was just sitting there, left. Knocking the door, guess who? The little troublemaker. And she talked and she talked and she talked. And you know what? I needed her to talk. I just needed somebody just to talk. And she said, oh, but the funeral, did you see that person? Oh, wasn't that a lovely homily? And she just talked and talked. And she ministered to me. And nobody else was there. So try this Christmas. See the love of God in each other. Remember, my mother used to always sing this song, For the Good Times. And it's a sad song about a couple breaking up. And most of the lyrics were just saying, just remember the good times. It's so easy to focus on pain and hurt and she said, he said, she said, he said. But remember the good times. I remember, I don't know if some of you know this Baptist minister, his name's Tony Campolo. I was at a conference with him and he's got a powerful, powerful preacher. And he told this story being on an airplane. He says, and this child was beside him. The child kept saying, I'm going to see daddy. I'm going to see daddy. He says, kept saying it and kept saying it and he got more irritated and more annoyed. He got this child all through the whole journey. I'm going to see daddy. <laughs> so he says, as the plane touched down and landed, this baby was still shouting, I'm going to see daddy, I'm going to see daddy. His mother had been feeding him chocolate and yogurts, and just as it came to the standstill, there was a mighty eruption. And the yogurt, the chocolate, the vomit, everything was up in the air, all in his hair, and his fingers, and his hands, everywhere. And the stewardess says, we don't have time to clean him up, just take him into the airport. And Tony Campolo hung back and thought, I wonder who's here to pick him up. And he saw this true story. He saw a man in a white suit standing behind the gates thinking, surely that's no daddy. I wonder if that's daddy. And he lingered. And he watched this young boy full of the stick and the vomit run along the tarmac. And guess what? The man with the white suit come running right down, grabbed the wee boy and just started hugging him took his jacket off, took a handkerchief, cleaned all the sick away from his face, his hands. And Tony Campbell said, the Holy Spirit convicted them. That's how I see you. I don't see all that stuff. I don't see the mess. I just see who you really are. I see your heart. I see you as my child. God loves you. God saw you, Jerry, all the years ago. He saw the potential in you. He saw the potential in you, Mary. But you just came here, didn't you? You just came here to visit. All of a sudden you came in here and your life's been transformed. And there will be people in our lives that will stretch us and they will challenge us. God knows every day in this charity shop that I'm trying to oversee, I get challenged every day. But it develops long suffering, patience, gentleness, and love, joy, peace. So, in this new few weeks, maybe it would be good to be reconciled with people that we have been hurt by. Maybe you make the first effort, make the first phone call. There's a lot of brokenness in families and there's a lot of people hurt. But we're bigger than that. We're the people of God. And we have to be able to see each other and to see others. Like the young girls last night, see them through the eyes of Jesus. Maybe it's your son or your daughter that's challenged you and hurt you and upset you. It could be a sister. I remember my mother was going to a nursing home. The whole family was fighting and arguing and killing each other. I look after my mother and, and everybody was at eight and everybody was wanting the best. 
that took his time to heal and go over that. So my challenge is Father Jerry has given us this next four weeks to pray. Pray that we see each other the way Jesus sees us. Pray that we see others through the eyes of Jesus because that's what I want to be. I thank God for what he's done in my life. I thank God for Father Jerry. I thank God for this ministry. I thank God for everything we've done and all the people's lives that's been touched in this ministry. Rosalind says before I got up. What? Thank you, Rosalind. I was just about to say that. Rosalind just said before I got up there, when I said John the Baptist, you're the John the Baptist and Father Jerry's the Jesus. <laughs> well, you know what happened to John the Baptist? <laughs> so, and thank God for those words with Father Jerry. Truth telling. Time for truth telling, but speak the truth in love. And let this next four weeks by time to see people through the eyes of Jesus. And thank you, Jean, for your inspiration.